Thank you for joining us again. And if you are joining for the first time, remember to share the episode, subscribe, hit that like button. I have a very interesting episode for you today. So when I started this channel, it was a challenge from a participant that just believed I needed to do this because there are conversations entrepreneurs need to have. And since I've started, one of the things my friends have given me feedback on has to do with communication, looking at the camera, things that I know some of you are uncomfortable with as well. But you know how I roll. If you've called me out on a weakness, I accept it and I do something about it. So today, this is me doing something about it, the communication thing. And people ignore the power of communication because in your life, you are an entrepreneur, you're selling, you're communicating, you're talking to your team and you need them to buy into your vision, you're communicating. You need to get married, you have to communicate. You need to keep that marriage, you have to communicate. You're raising kids, you have to communicate. And I have a man joining me today who says, communication is that powerful, but many people don't realize that when they communicate, they are not communicating for success. I have Chris Voice, and yes, <laughs> his name is Chris Voice. Born with a name that says this is what he's going to do. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Ntando. Thank you. I say the other day, time when I hear you, every time I think of um, Tyson Fury. Uh -huh. People who are born and are just given names that say <laughs> this man is going to be scary in boxing. This I'm man is scary going in to... voicing. <laughs> <laughs> You're scary in voicing. So it's good to have you. Thank you. Thanks. So it's honored and privileged here. that you came. Thank you. Thanks so for when, having me. When you hear communication and communicating for success, what stands out for you in general? You know, I think, I think one of the very first things is awareness. Awareness is the basis for all growth. Mm. It's the basis for all self-development. Mm. And with the voice, um, it's, that's very much the case. So when I say we are communicating for success, people might say, well, of course, you know, what else would we do? We <laughs> communicate for success. But the reality is that we don't. Very often we actually communicate for failure. And part of that is because we are not aware of how we're communicating. Okay. So we develop habits, you know, bad okay. habits of communicating mm. to do with the way you use your voice, to do mm. with the way you actually might use facial expression, mm. to do with the way you, you use your body, um, to do with the way you use your brain in terms of thinking about what you're going to say. <laughs> Sometimes the stuff comes out before you've thought about it, and then you think, oh, I probably shouldn't have said that. But it's out. <laughs> it's like the email that you've already sent, you know. Mm, it's, gone. it's gone. So now you can't take it back. So very often even thinking before you speak is, a, is an important aspect of it. Mm. But in general, mm. what I'm trying to say is that we don't, we don't think enough mm. about communication. We assume mm. that old story about, we make assumptions about we communication. We assume we are good communicators. Yeah. It's a case of like, well, I'm speaking, aren't I? <laughs> you know, that's what I do. I'm speaking. Like I told you. Yeah, exactly. And then very often, but what did you tell me? And what did I understand that you gave to me? There are all these perceptions. There are all these different things. You know, the communication model is very simple. Mm -hmm. Technically, it's here's a sender, here's a receiver. And mm -hmm. the, the, the sender encodes a message, mm -hmm. sends it to the receiver who mm -hmm. decodes the message. Mm -hmm. If you're lucky... <laughs> because in between that action, that very simple action, things can go wrong. For me, the thing about communication is connecting. How do we connect with other human beings? Whether it's one-on-one, -on -one, us talking like this, yeah. um, whether it's in a small group that you're running and you're chairing a meeting, mm -hmm. okay? whether it's the sales team that you're talking to and you're trying to get them revved up or trying to get them to understand something or you're standing in front of an audience of a thousand people mm. essentially it's about connection mm. and if we don't make the connection we haven't really communicated and when you talk about these two the sender and the receiver 
if the message is not received, there's barriers in between. Exactly. In your experience coaching people with communication, what are some of the barriers that stand out? Okay, so for me, the, the barriers and the things that can go wrong, that can create a disconnect, <laughs> mm. relate to a number of things. Okay, They might, in fact, just relate to your body language. Because it's called body language because it's a language. Okay? In the same way as English, Zulu, Afrikaans, <laughs> Russian, it's a language. Yeah. Um, at, at the meeting yesterday, I was talking about... Um, being in a workshop and I was sitting there yeah there was this Someone lady was. folding her arms like this okay and she had this look on her face <laughs> she was moving her mouth like this she looked like the most angry old cow I've ever seen excuse the language <laughs> and then we started talking about body language and yeah. people were generally talking and at some point she said well I don't know I just think people are stupid because everyone thinks I'm angry <laughs> So, of course, the first thing I had to say was, ma'am, you are the angriest looking person I've ever seen. And so did everyone else in the group. She was completely unaware of the fact that she developed. Maybe she was angry. Maybe she was angry with the world. Maybe she was angry that none of her dreams had come true. Or it became a habit and she just didn't this is let the thing. go. It became a habit. So somewhere mm. along the line, maybe she got angry or she got used to expressing herself in an angry way. It became a habit. Now it was part of who she was. So in fact, every time she communicated, this is what the receiver of the communication was received. received anger. Mm. Okay, which immediately puts you off and you think, well, what, what have I done wrong? Why is she angry with me? What's going on here? So she's giving off this, I mean, it's maybe a bit of a stupid example, and it's quite an extreme one. Mm. But the reality is that if we are not aware of what our bodies are doing, of how, you know, one of them for me, I was running another workshop some time ago, and it was a very small workshop. It was mm. a group of people who were doing presentation skills. They were all speakers. And yeah. I was running a gym for the voice, which I'll talk mm. about just now. Yeah. But I was running a gym for the voice workshop, because the voice is a physical part of your physical body. Mm. You can develop your voice in the same way as you can develop your body in some way that you want to. This lady was sitting there, it was a day's workshop, in fact it was two days, and she just sat there with this kind of aloof look on her mm -hmm. face. She never smiled, she never really engaged, she might give an opinion, but nothing here changed. Either she was Botoxed, so much that she couldn't move her face. But at some point, we were giving feedback, and very honest feedback. We were saying how people came across. And um, I said to this lady, look, I really don't want to offend you at all, but you have the kind of facial expression that does not invite me mm. to connect with you. And uh, one guy said, yeah, it's the resting bitch. Yeah. I said, what? He said, it's the resting bitch face. I'd never heard that expression until that moment. I believe it's actually quite a common expression. But it's an well, expression... It's the first time I'm hearing, but really? I'm thinking if I was in the workshop, I'd be feeling sorry for the lady. Of course. Or just waiting for things to go down. And, you know, we had to, had to sort of say, look, the information you're putting across is important. You've got an important subject. But you look as if you're not wanting to connect with us as an audience at all. So that's just the word that came out from the, the one guy mm. who was in the workshop. He said, mm. we call it the resting bitch face. <laughs> so in other words, you purposefully don't show any emotion at all. Okay? You just look as if you are superior to okay. everyone else. Well, how does that connect with people? How does that make people feel? Mm. It makes people feel disorientated. It makes them feel that they've got no worth to that person. Mm. So all I'm saying is that in that case, she needed to repair that. So understanding communication and what you need to learn about communication, you need to be prepared to face up to what it is mm. that's not working for you. How do you grow if you don't know? This is why feedback and even criticism is important. Mm. You learn from criticism. You don't mm. like it. No one likes it. Mm. But if you listen to it and say, okay, what is it really saying? What do I need to do? So if people say to you, look, you speak so fast that half the time I can't understand what you're talking about. Well, that's a communication problem. 
It is a communication problem. We live in a country with lots of different accents, mm. lots of different cultures, lots of different languages. Yeah. Okay. In fact, South Africa is a place where really communication probably should go wrong most of the time, given the situation. The in fact, it doesn't. Diverse cultures. Because of the diversity. But the interesting thing is that people do make an effort mm. to make themselves understood. And that helps to keep the connection and the clarity going. But as a voice coach, if you're asking me, specifically from a voice point of view, mm -hmm. there are things to do with the human voice, lack of clarity. If you've got a very tight jaw <laughs> and you never open your mouth and you talk, I'd like to talk to you today about the sales figures. <laughs> the sales figures are not looking good. That is not coming across, mainly because it's staying inside your mouth. You've got to actually use your jaw. Your jaw is one of the organs of speech if I can be technical for yeah. a minute. You've Please. got organs of speech, the jaw, the teeth, the tongue, the lips, the soft palate inside mm. there. These are all parts of your body that create speech. So mm. if you don't use those, you're not going to be heard. Mm. Whose fault is that? Yours. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say that as a teacher, <laughs> as a coach. It's your fault nobody understands you. <laughs> Because you don't speak clearly enough, or you speak too fast, or you don't pause, or you, you don't use vocal variety to make your voice interesting. Mm. You're just laying a whole lot of information on us, and we don't want to hear it. That applies a lot to public speaking, and even with yeah. the example that you're giving. One barrier that I know of for many is they get into their head a lot of anxiety builds up and now they're trying to speak their mind is moving faster than their mouth and it gets chaotic from there is it something that you help people overcome when it comes to stage fright very much so i mean it's one of the things that you're always working with so stage fright or nerves that's common mm -hmm. in fact the majority of people some mm -hmm. people are just very confident they get up there they just talk they mm -hmm. are the minority the majority of people are nervous. Mm. Okay. Now, there are two things there. The one thing is that nerves are not necessarily a bad thing. Okay. Um, because your nerves give you a kind of an adrenaline. They give you an energy which enables you to speak in a more compelling way. So make, make friends with your nerves. Okay. You, know, you can say to yourself, okay, I've got nerves. So what do I do? How do I deal with it? In fact, it is my friend. That's one aspect. The other aspect is the way you breathe. So mm. the way we breathe for presentation, for voice work, the minute you get on that stage, you're a performer. The minute you get on, on that stage, stage... or sit in front of a panel in an interview. Yes, you're an mm. actor in that moment. This is not to say that you aren't authentic. Mm. Yes, you must be yourself. But in fact, you are performing. Okay. So there are certain skills that the performer uses. A singer, uh, an actor, a performer uses their lungs much more than normal people. So in fact, when you breathe, and a lot of us breathe in here in our shoulders, you know, if I run a workshop and I say, take a deep breath, people go, and I'm thinking, <laughs> why do they do that? You haven't got lungs in your shoulders. Your lungs are here. Mm. So the point about breathing is breathe deeply. Mm. Use more breath, it's free. You know, there's, mm. there's breath out there. The government has not yet put a tax on air. <laughs> it's free, okay? So we can get out there and breathe. So the point about breathing for your voice is to breathe more. Pull the air right down into your lungs. Pull it down mm. into your lungs so that you're expanding your lungs. What would a deep breath look like? So it would look like this. Are you, am I on camera? Yeah, you now? are on camera. Okay, so then the... <laughs> is this the camera? Yeah. I'm looking at the... So the important thing is to relax the shoulders. The I'm next like thing, mine. okay, is to realize <laughs> that you're going to pull the air down, not mm -hmm. here. I mean, okay. if you're a runner and you're taking in quick breaths, you'll probably do that. You're gasping, like if you're running the comrades or you're a fast... What, you know, running is slightly different. Sport, if you're a soccer player, whatever, you are pulling on air. If you're okay. a speaker... You are taking advantage of that air in a calm way. Mm -hmm. So you might do this. I place my hands here mm -hmm. and I breathe in. I take my hands out 
I turn them over, take a pause, and then I breathe out. The two important things, the two rules mm -hmm. of breathing for public presentation with your voice, mm -hmm. get more air, control the air going out. Look at this. So I would do this. How long? How long I was should about that to ask, How long should it be? <laughs> it could be as long as possible. <laughs> so in an acting class, it might be 45 seconds. A lot of people do this. <sighs> what the hell's the good of that? The breath mm. is gone. The breath is the cushion of your voice. So you're saying for a speaker, these are some of the rituals yes. to do before you go for your presentation. Very nice word, rituals. They are the rituals. So I, if you're going to run a race, if you're yeah. a comrade's marathon runner, okay, mm. you don't wake up that morning and think, ha, huh, I'm going to go and run the comrades. You'll be dead by the time you get 10 kilometers <laughs> along the road because you're not prepared, mm. even that morning. But the thing is with speaking is to, to release your body, to get used to this deep mm. breathing, to get used to developing this instrument that we've is, all is got. Is that how you develop your voice? Because you have a deep, rich voice. Mm. Do, do you still do practices daily? I do them every day. Every day of my life. What so, would that look like for me if I, want to, if I want to have that nice, deep voice? One day, it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's part of it, of course, is you've got a natural pitch to your voice. Yeah. Some people have a deeper voice. Mm -hmm. I'm older, much older than you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and I was a smoker back in the day. <laughs> I'm not recommending smoking. <laughs> that is not a good thing. I gave it up a long time ago. But the, the reality is that you will have a certain pitch of voice that you can play with. These exercises will help you deepen your voice. So the, the sound of the voice comes here. Okay, your, okay. Voice, your voice box is there. That's mm -hmm. the larynx. And then it comes into your mouth, into your nasal passages, mm -hmm. even into some of the bone in your head, in your throat, your chest. Those okay. are all what we call resonators, like a guitar. Okay. okay. A guitar has a box, which is like an amplifier, and that box produces the sound. Um, mm. It's the same with your voice. Mm. So one of the exercises, again, or you, do you want exercises? There was in the breathing. Yeah. yeah, I can have one or two more. <laughs> Obviously, you are my guy from now on. <laughs> so the, the, those humming sort of sounds. Mm. The thing about the voice, you may need to get it to the front of your face. It should sit here on your lips. Now that mm. maybe sounds ridiculous. You think, well, mm. I'm just speaking, you know, the voice comes out. <laughs> How does it come out? So, you know, you can, you can adjust, you can grow, develop, adjust your own voice. So here's a good exercise linked to the breathing. It's okay. just humming, but it's placing the voice here. People tend to speak at the back of their throats. The sounds are here. Okay. Mm. Move it forward. And that is something you can do physically, and it's something you can do mentally, as it were. You can mm. think your voice. So look at this. You go. That sound is in here. Already my lips are itching. How do I know I'm doing it right? You should feel. You should feel that little vibration okay. in, right here on your okay. mouth. Okay. Try once more. Look at me. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. I mean, I could feel it there. As I touched your face, mm. I can feel the vibration here, mm. which is cool. All I'm saying is it's going to be everywhere because that's where the resonators mm. are. But I'm saying if you move it forward, you've got a greater choice, chance of it being a clearer sound. No, I like. never actually quite appreciated the importance of this until I think it's a month ago, I was listening to Trevor Noah mm -hmm. saying before he goes to the Daily Show, it's an old video that he had done behind the scenes, yeah. that every day he goes to a voice coach before yeah. he goes to the show and he spends like an hour there. I thought, what? Well, Trevor Noah is a good example because Trevor Noah eventually developed what they call nodules on oh. his larynx because he wasn't doing the breathing and so on. So he was, I mean, he's up performing every day, even before going to the US mm. and, and getting into the Daily Show. He was performing night after night after night after night, up there on the stage, using his voice, pushing his voice. 
and damaging his voice. So he had to go to a voice coach to learn some of these exercises. He was also given, I watched one show of his, he was given a concoction of tea with mm. lemon and honey. This is an important thing. You look okay. after your voice. If it's what winter... Does tea, what does the tea do? It just lubricates. Lemon so the first is drink water. Mm -hmm. Okay, Drinking water is very good for the vocal cords. The other is, I mean, we were sitting here in Johannesburg. Johannesburg has a very dry climate. It's sitting at 2,000 meters above sea level. That's high. There's okay. less and less moisture at this level. So during winter, I mean, something I do even in Cape Town, where I'm living now, is that I will, I will inhale, I will do steaming. Oh. Put hot water in a, you know, like when you were young yeah, and your mother, you were getting steaming. a cold and she would push your head there in the, <laughs> and say, breathe in, breathe in. Yeah. Because you're breathing in that steam, which is um, lubricating the vocal cords. So, so if, I, if I'm this side, how often would I be having to do it? If I'm a speaker and I want to keep my voice healthy. So I would do the exercises every day. Okay. okay. I would drink a lot of water. Mm -hmm. I would look at things like a lubricating kind of natural drink, like a rooibos with honey and lemon, um, that sort of thing is good for the throat. These exercises, the humming, when you drive your car, the car is the best place to do the exercises. It's mm -hmm. like your own personal voice studio. You're okay. sitting there, you know, driving on... Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're playing that, around with your about voice. The tension here. Yes. That's part of it. Yeah. It affects your pitch. Yeah. You know, you need to release tension here. They, they talk about this being the stress zone. You get tight in this your part. shoulders. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You get tight here. You get tight in your jaw without even realizing it. Maybe you feel it more here, but it's all here. This is okay. also the vocal zone. So if I'm a speaker and about to go to, onto the stage, I would need to do something around this area as well to release the tension. I would be doing the exercises we've just talked about every day. All Get right. up in the morning, spend a couple of minutes, two, three, four, five minutes, just loosening up, doing some breathing exercises, stand at an open window or go outside and breathe in and then do that humming. Do the humming in the car mm. because it sounds good in the car. Do the humming <laughs> okay. in the toilet. Okay. All right. Because there you're in a small room, it's got concrete or tiles or something, your voice sounds good in there. So it's all about appreciating your own voice, thinking I can do more with this voice if I want to, and enjoying your voice. Mm -hmm. You know, people get because nervous. Some people don't. Yeah, people get nervous to speak, they get nervous to go on camera, and a lot of it is. What do I sound like? Because, you know, you, you record yourself on your phone and you think, is that me? <laughs> but the reality is that, in fact, what you hear there is not that accurate as to who you are. But it's a very good uh, example of how you are using your voice. Mm -hmm. So recording yourself, in fact, is very important. Record yourself reading something, reading a couple of pages out of a book. Are you going too fast? Are you not, never stopping to take a breath. So I'm checking for speed. Am I too fast? Too fast. Clarity. Clarity. Accent. Oh. You know, we've all got accents in South Africa and every mm. country in the world. We've got even English as a language, which is now spoken more and more all over the world, is spoken in so many different mm. accents, even in England, where the language comes from. Mm. The first time I'm a South African, born and bred, but I come from an English background. Mm. My grandfather was English. The first time I went to England, thinking, well, am I going home? You know, in fact, South Africa is home, but you have the sense of this is where my people come from. And I got to England. I couldn't understand half of what people were saying. <laughs> and that's the home of the English language because of accent. Okay. So again, it's an so awareness. Actually, accent can be a barrier. It can be a barrier if it leads to lack of clarity. Oh, yeah. But we all have accents, and accents can be really attractive. Mm. But we need to know. I mean, Trevor Noah is brilliant on it's accents. switching them up, yeah. Yeah, he makes us laugh at our own accents. Mm. And that's good, because we become aware of how we might sound to other people. If I've damaged my voice and I'm about to go on stage, I get called somewhere and maybe it was flu or whatever, I've damaged the voice and it sounds mm. husky. 
do I have options in terms of... Look, you do have options in terms of what you've just spoken about. Steaming, yeah. okay. And the other option is if you are presenting that night, do not speak a word the whole day. <laughs> not one word. You say to your wife, your husband, whoever, there will be no sounds coming out of this face. Or you write it down. Yes, write it down. Hand it to them on a piece of paper. Do not speak because that is straining the voice. And if it's already strained by a virus or cold air or whatever, you're doing it more damage. So you have to rest the voice. If you're a speaker, mm -hmm. every now and then, take a day off from speaking. Just speak. Maybe it's not a case of don't speak at all, but speak mm -hmm. less. Much less. Particularly if you know you've got a compromised voice, as it were. Okay, that's beautiful. I'm thinking of another barrier. I don't know how to put it, though, to you, but communicating at different levels or with different language types. So one thing I've been accused of, and I know the people were right, was speaking, having an argument, and I'm communicating logically to a person who's communicating emotionally. And the feedback is, don't you have a heart? And I'm thinking, it needs to make sense. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get where I'm coming from? Yeah. Where the communication ends up not happening because yeah. I, don't, I don't have the communication term for it. So what happens there? You know, I'm not really sure how to answer that question <laughs> because I'm actually thinking of an instant where it happened to me talking to someone and I was trying to be very rational and they were being very emotional. We have to acknowledge where people are. I have to acknowledge that you're trying to be very rational, you're trying to stick to the facts, and I'm emotional. But you need to acknowledge my emotion. You need to acknowledge... So, I mean, this is typical in a partnership, male, yeah. female, whatever it might be. True. In and, a partnership and, and employer, employee, sometimes. Yes. Yeah, but I think there, it's, 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 it's the openness of the communication that's important. I mean, if, if I was dealing with someone who was very emotional, um, I would have to say, look, I can see that you are really emotional. You're getting overexcited. You're getting very angry. What's going on? What is that emotion? Mm -hmm. Tell me, let's forget about what we're talking about. Tell me about the emotion. Mm -hmm. What is going on? Then it gives you the chance to say, well, actually, I'm just feeling like I've been left out of all the decisions made in this place. No one ever talks to me. I'm the last person. I feel completely ignored. Mm. Then we go, so, okay. So you're going to feel angry if you feel ignored. Then at least we know what the emotion is. And we can say, well, how do we change that? I, I, look, it's almost impossible. So pause and understand how each person is feeling. We are emotional beings. You know, to say, oh, we must only have rational conversation <laughs> doesn't make sense to me because we, I'm quite an emotional person. So I will automatically react emotionally. And sometimes I have to step back and say, okay, cool it. Cool the emotion. Get rid of that feeling of being ignored and try to hear what is being said here. It's engaging the mind. It's engaging the whole, the whole person mm. when you are so communicating. So saying if... If someone is angry and they have a message to communicate, you advise them to wait until they have cooled off? That could be part of it. You know, sometimes you need the anger to say what you want to say. <laughs> but then I just think that, you know, some people are very non-confrontational. They do not want confrontation. Mm -hmm. And other people are much more able to handle conflict. But handling conflict, which is a slightly different topic that we've gone yeah, yeah, yeah. in the direction of, but handling conflict is really important, particularly in the you workplace environment. You actually do need good communication skills to handle it. You do. But the, the important thing is to sit down and handle it and say, look, mm. we've got a problem here. There is something that hasn't worked. Can we unpack it? Let's just try to unpack it, get it on the table, and sort out what's going on. Mm. so that we can begin to bridge the gap that has now come between us. What are some of the myths that you've seen in your experience when it comes to communication? And so, not mi a myth. Myth? Yeah, because I, I know one mm. that I'm thinking of even as I'm asking, where someone feels like they communicated by avoiding talking to someone. 
Yeah. Well, I think avoidance personally is always a mistake. Look, I do understand the thing of step back and calm down. And maybe that's partly avoidance, where I say, okay, I'm just going to get out of this situation. I'm going to walk on the beach. I'm going to go and get a cup of coffee or whatever, calm myself down a little bit, but then come back and face it. Avoiding things, they, they, somewhere they come out. Mm. Somewhere they grow and it's going to happen. It's going to come out, even if it comes out sideways, as they mm. say. You know, someone <laughs> someone makes a real jab at you. Someone says, oh, yes, but of course, uh, in Tantu, you're always like that. You always do that. Mm. What, what, what do I do? That's the sideways of something that wasn't dealt with before. Mm. So avoidance is not a good idea. We need to open communication and talk to each other. Look, for okay. me, the biggest myth yeah. is someone who, who denies their ability to communicate. Oh, well, I, I, don't, I don't like to talk. I'm not a talker. I'm not a talker. Or they say, well, this is the way I talk. Take it or leave it. And you say, I'll leave it, thanks very much. You know, is there's, there's no awareness there. Um, we can grow in anything. We can grow in anything as human beings. Who do you think we can learn from as speakers? Yo, look, there are so many really good speakers out there. And of course, there are a lot of speakers who really, politicians, I'm sorry, but I am not a fan of politicians <laughs> generally all around the world, <laughs> because they're very self-important, yeah. puffed up, and I'm going to tell you how things should be. And in fact, they are there to serve us. Mm. So the self-importance, they should leave it at home, mm. if you ask me. So there, that, but even within politicians, there are some very good speakers. Mm. Barack Obama, for me, is a brilliant speaker. I love okay. the way he speaks. Okay, I mm -hmm. think he's a brilliant man. He's got credibility. He knows what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. And he speaks from the heart. Okay. He's, he's a man with feeling and with mm -hmm. passion. And I think that's very important. But goodness, I mean, you throw that question at me now. In Tanto, I'm not sure that I have an answer immediately. There are a lot. No, you lot. did give me an answer. I'm sure there's a, a, a whole others. What do you particularly like in a few of the others? You've mentioned three things with Obama. Okay, I just like, I like it when people are very open. I'll give you an example. I belong to a particular church. Okay. And I have a minister in that church who stands in the pulpit and preaches. Now, mm -hmm. I've been involved in church for many years of my life. And I've got to the point where I think to myself, I don't think I want to listen to this again. <laughs> I'm being very honest here. Okay. Because you're thinking, this is going to be so boring. So I'm fairly new in this church. And this particular man, I won't mention his name. He is a brilliant speaker. And okay. what makes him brilliant is that he unpacks. All right. So he won't just stand there and this is what you need to, this is what you should be like. He's saying, okay, let's look at this situation. Let's look at what was meant by Jesus in this particular situation. What mm. did he mean? What's the context? What were other people thinking? How did he possibly say this? What mm. are, how would other people, how would a Jewish rabbi comment on this? How would a Muslim comment on this. Let's look at the Muslim poet who's written something similar. It opens my mind. My goodness. It opens my mind to see things because otherwise we land up with these very narrow um, mindsets, mm. you know, and the human mind is this extraordinary thing that we've been given and that we need to use. So if he is an example of a brilliant mm. speaker, and for me right at the moment, he's a brilliant speaker. Mm. It's because he comes from different angles, he shows different views, he unpacks and opens the subject he's talking about, and I want to go in there. Mm. I want to go and find out what is in there. As opposed to someone just talking at me, mm. you know, mm. shouting at you. This is what, hey, do this, do that. Mm. I'm too old for that. I want to say, no, I need a bit of space <laughs> to think it. about it. I like it. that you're saying someone talking at you. At me. Because communication is two-way, which means... Listening is part of it as well. Very much so. You know, there's that old saying, we've been given two ears and one mouth because we must <laughs> listen twice as much as we speak. I mean, there's real truth in that. We need to listen. As you're coaching, are there mistakes that you see people making when it comes to listening? Um, Just well, I, I, listening habits that you've picked up? Yeah, well, I mean, the, the obvious one is that we start thinking about what we want to say while we're listening. So while this person is talking to us, we're already formulating <laughs> our opinion to give back, our <laughs> argument. No, stop your brain. 
just attach yourself to that person. For me, that's the most important one. And the other is distractions, you know, that when, yeah. when you feel like someone's not listening to you, their, their eyes are going over here and they're looking at their phone and they're looking out the window. You want to say, excuse me, can I'm we please? Yeah, I'm talking. Would you mind paying me the respect of listening to me? Yeah, and we do it a lot and we're not aware of it sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Where you tell the person, continue, I'm listening, <laughs> but <laughs> you're responding to a well, message it's here. It's frustrating that. Interesting that you bring that up. What success stories have you experienced, like transformational stories from clients that have come back to say thank you? Yeah, well... One or two, Yeah, as we kept off. Yeah, I mean, one was an accent one. This is, this is a person who happened to be an Afrikaans-speaking person. Okay. And he had a very strong Afrikaans accent. And he was in an environment where English was always spoken. And he really felt like people just didn't understand him. So he came to me to fix his accent. <laughs> he doesn't want to speak in an Afrikaans accent. You know, he speaks Afrikaans, that's fine. But he wants to speak English not sounding like a very strong Afrikaner. So I can change my accent. Say again? I can change my accent. Yeah. I can change it. Yeah, so, he, so we just... Accent is difficult because accent takes a long time. Okay. Accent comes from the people that you were... You know, the people you grew up with, you people you went to school with, your own mother tongue, as they call it. Sure. Accent comes from all that. So to, to change an accent or to get a little bit more English, if you like, um, takes a lot of time. But it worked very well with him. He eventually felt so much more confident in speaking English and the way that he was speaking it. And then, okay. you know, there are others of people who come who just lack confidence. Um, they just need to do more and more speaking and standing up there and they stand at the front and I sit at the back and I say, okay, tell me about your favorite movie, whatever it might be. <laughs> and they must present, they must get used to speaking. And as you're coaching them, do you coach them on storytelling as well? Coach them on? Storytelling. Yeah. So The art of it. Yes. Look, you know, the art of storytelling is not a speciality of mine. Mm -hmm. But certainly I would get into the fact that you are telling me a story. What do the components of the story need to be? Mm -hmm. It needs to be interesting. It needs to be entertaining. It needs to be compelling. It mm -hmm. needs me to want to listen to the whole story to the end. <laughs> so storytelling, of course, is very much what we've been talking about. It's the way you use your voice. It's mm -hmm. the way you use your body, your yeah. body language. It's the way you use your face, your facial expression. All and that the kind speed of and the pauses. Yeah, all those things, all those technical speech things apply very much in storytelling. That's beautiful. Okay, advice for entrepreneurs when they are communicating with their teams. Teams one, customers two. Okay, so, um, yeah, look, you need to become aware of how you come across. That's my first piece of advice. Please try to find out. Record yourself, speak to somebody else, be open to feedback. But try to get an idea of how you come across. Where are the areas in the way that you communicate that could be making it hard for you, that could be creating a disconnect? Is it because you speak too fast? Is it because your accent is so strong people can't understand it? Is it because your body language is angry and defensive? What, what are the ways that you come across? And um, Is clothing a part of it? Yes. You know, the, thing, I, I, the whole clothing thing has changed so much. I mean, I'm an old man. You know, when I grew up, you had to dress very neatly, preferably wear a tie. I mean, when I started working, I wore a tie and a shirt and a jacket every day. And this was in Durban, where it's as hot as hell and it's humid. Okay. That's all changed, you know. And I love the way it's changed. I mean, people wear different items. Um, I mean, I actually think that African people, black African people, yeah. have brought that into the situation because okay. they're much more... Liberal with... Yeah, they're more liberal. They, they put bright colors on. They look fabulous, men and women. Men mm. will do things with their hair, which, you know, is just different mm. and interesting. I love that. I think that 
the way we dress, the way we appear, we need to feel confident about this is the way I like to look. Mm. So that we're not uh, too much um, affected by the old style of the way it was okay. done. You know, we're in a new era from Isn't that point Isn't there a fit for, for purpose element to it though? Isn't there a? Fit for purpose. Fit for purpose. I might like the way I look, but where I'm going... Very good point. So there, obviously, you need to look at who your client is, who you're going to talk to. If you're going to go and sit in a boardroom <laughs> full of guys and ladies wearing suits and ties and dressed very smartly. Look, I don't know. Part of me says you need to dress like that for them mm. to be feel comfortable. The other part of me says wear a brightly colored jacket, put your hair in dreads, wear some bling, put some stuff on that as you walk in, those people are going, what the hell is this? <laughs> Simply because They'll it has never an impact. Forget you. <laughs> They'll never forget you. You're standing out from the crowd. You've got to measure that. I mean, I'm saying that partly in a joking tone because you're quite right. Fit for purpose is important. If you're going to dress in such a way that's really going to offend people, what's the point? Mm. Particularly if you want them to become a customer. But at the same time, you've got a personality. Mm. You are who you are. And that. It's a branding. It's about branding. It needs to shine That's through. Beautiful. Okay. So both can go situational. Yeah. I, th- I thought of one last question. When, especially when communicating with customers, mm. cold versus warm emails. I've heard you talk quite nicely about that. And you have a beautiful example around it. Look, um, yeah, emails, the written word, we all know how, how wrong that can go. Yeah, because it the can thing go is, very wrong. It can go very wrong. The thing is that, you know, WhatsApp, SMSs, messages on your phone, there's not a tone of voice in the phone <laughs> unless you leave a voice note. Um, so if, you, if you, you get something that's written in a certain way that, you know, like, well, what was the problem there? Now, how do I take that? Is someone saying, well, what was the problem there? Mm. In which case it's open, it's warm. What was the problem there? I'm thinking, oh, I'm in trouble. But in text, you can't tell. In text, you can't tell. So you have I to would, make it up. Yes. Look, the thing is, we can get too flowery. Mm. You know, if we're writing an email, we can get too flowery, putting in all sorts of uh, fancy language that makes us look smart. I don't think that helps. Okay. I think you need to have the facts there, but you need to also do them in such a way that they don't estrange people. People are not going, oh, why, why is this guy taking this tone with me? You know, I mean, an example might be, um, dear sir, your book has arrived. <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> thank you, regards. You know, I mean, that for me is, it tells the point. It's a fact. There's what you have to do. But if it's a dear sir, we're delighted to let you know that your book has just arrived. If you'd like to collect it, please do so at the following address. That to me is a lot more friendly. It's warmer. Definitely sounds better. There are a few more words there, but it's to me, I look at that and I think, wow, that's cool. So you think it makes the person receiving feel like you actually took time to write this? Exactly. And that you are wanting to connect with them. You're not a robot. You're not AI. You're not chat GPT. You're a human being talking to a human being, even in an email. That's something I've been guilty of a number of times, definitely. Where I'm so busy, but I see there's a lot of emails and I write those short, factual, yeah. quick, snappy emails yeah. and just send. Look, you know, I think there's a point to that when one is very busy and one needs to, but what is the way that, you, it might take you a little bit longer, but what is the way that you could say what you're going to say in a slightly warmer, more human way? Even if it's short. Even if it's short. Thank you. We could talk about this all day, you know. There is so much about communication. It is a fascinating subject. And Mm. it's something that we should take seriously. Mm. Because good communication is really important. And it it moves you towards success. Mm. Whereas bad communication loses everything. As you close, looking at the camera, what is the difference between someone who's communicating for failure and someone who's communicating for success? (laughs) Non-awareness. You need to be aware of how you come across so that you can fix the things that aren't right. (laughs) Fix your communication so that it works well. 
you had it. So take the time to go and get feedback. Yeah. Ask people around you how you are coming across. Yeah. If you are a content creator, check the comments and ask, how am I coming across? Sometimes they tell you before you even ask. Exactly. <laughs> and the feedback is not nice. Thank you for hanging with us. Till this time, see you on the next episode. And remember to share the episode. Communication is important for everyone. This is, I know the vision is just to support entrepreneurs, but a lot more people will benefit from it who are not entrepreneurs because everyone out there is communicating. Thank you. Thank you.